Hello, Rune Wraith here, and welcome to my guide on the Entry Mode Theater of Blood. In this guide, we're going to be discussing the skills, gear, movement, and mechanics that you need to know in order to get through this and get your quest cape. So, let's get started. So let's start off by talking about some of the skills and stats that you'll need to complete the Entry Mode Theater of Blood. I would definitely recommend at least 75 in all of your melee combat skills, that being attack, defense, and strength. Uh, the theater is a very melee focused endeavor. Um, I'd also recommend having at least 75 range. This is, allows you to wield the toxic blowpipe, which is used in several of the rooms as well. Uh, now magic itself isn't as much of a priority in the theater theater. Uh, you do use it in a couple of rooms, so I would recommend anywhere between 60, 70 uh, magic will do you just fine. Uh, you definitely don't need it in the maiden room, and we'll go over that when we get there. So in this section, we're going to be discussing the gear and inventory that you're going to want to have with you when you do the entry mode Theater of Blood. Uh, this is a setup that I use, and it's pretty standard among Theater of Blood learners. Uh, I have full Elite Void, but you can use full regular Void just as well. We're using this because you really only have to switch the helmet when you switch into your range and mage gear, so it makes the switches very easy, especially in rooms like the Nyla room. I have a Torture, um, but this might be overkill for entry. You could definitely get away with a Fury or a Glory if you needed to. Uh, I am using an Abyssal Tentacle, and this is important because there is one stage where you do need to poison uh, spiders in the Verzik uh, P2 phase. Um, however, you know, you could probably get away without DPSing, um, out DPSing the spiders in entry mode. So, um, Abyssal Tentacle is, is still a really great all-around weapon for the, the entry mode theater of blood. Um, in my offhand, I am using an Avernic Defender, but of course a Dragon Defender would work just as well. I wouldn't recommend anything less than Dragon because, um, it, it, it's completely free to get, so there's really no reason why everyone shouldn't have a Dragon Defender. Um, of course, the Void Gloves and Primordial Boots. Uh, the Prims can definitely be downgraded to Dragon Boots if you don't have those, and Dragon Boots are super cheap. They're like two or 300k, so um, very, very affordable. And then I have my Imbued Ber Berserker Ring, uh, which is only like 2.5 mil or something like that. So um, really uh, a generally affordable gear setup other than I would say the Avernic and the Fury, which of course you can substitute for lower tier weapons. So as far as your inventory goes, it's pretty straightforward. We're definitely gonna wanna bring the Void uh, Ranger Helm along with a Toxic Blowpipe, uh, the Ava's Assembler or a Tractor or even Accumulator if you have that. And then I bring a four-way range switch with a um, Necklace of Anguish. Um, this just gives me extra range DPS, but of course it's not necessary. You could get away with an, a necklace of, like, you know, a glory or even just a three-way range, which would be great. I would highly recommend having the Toxic Blowpipe for this, though. It just makes so many of the rooms significantly easier, not only Maiden, um, but also when you're doing the Nilo room as well, you'll use the Blowpipe there. Uh, you'll also need some mage gear, um, not as critical, mostly it's just going to be used in the Nilo room. Um, so of course I've got my Occult Amulet and Mage Arena 2 cape. Uh, the Mage Arena 2 cape is free and the Occult Amulet is only like 300k, so these are great mage DPS upgrades to bring along with the, the Void Range, or I'm sorry, Void Mage Hood. Uh, and then I have a Toxic Trident as well. If you have just a normal Trident, that will work as well. And I'm pretty sure that you could get away with the Ibans Blast if that's all you have um, as well. However, the, the, the Tridents definitely um, help up the DPS, especially in that Nyla room, where you'll be using the majority of your mage. Uh, I've got a Dragon Warhammer here, and that's to lower a couple of the boss's uh, defense. However, this is definitely not needed in entry mode top. So if, if you're hearing that you absolutely need a Dragon Warhammer to do entry mode top, that is incorrect. You do not want to bring one, this. It does make some of the rooms slightly easier, 
but you can definitely get away without it or even just use a BGS which is viable in many of the same circumstances that the Dragon Warhammer can be used in. I do have a Crystal Halberd and this is useful for its special attack in the room with Bloat as well as finishing off Versic in P3 so it can do a lot of damage with its special attack so if you have one that's fantastic I mean it's only like 350k for the the Crystal Weapon Seed so this can be a very achievable special attack weapon to bring. You definitely want to have the Salve Amulet E with you and make sure that it is um, upgraded with the Tarn's Lair mini quest. This is going to be used in Bloat since he is considered an undead creature. This gives a massive DPS boost, so definitely bring one of those in with you. I have my Rune Pouch with uh, Death Runes. Uh, blood runes and water runes and this is for casting ice barrage now you don't need to cast ice barrage or really any of the spells in entry mode tab normally this would be used for for maiden however we don't need we, we don't need that we can absolutely just dps the crabs down with range uh, before they get to maiden it's very very simple uh, this is more of an, an optional thing if you don't want to use the the trident's uh, built-in spell the rest of your inventory should be packed with food prayer potions um, super combat potions uh, ranging potions uh, maybe some anglerfish sharks or combo eats I'm intentionally leaving some of these spaces blank because within the theater, in the entry mode, um, you're going to be given opportunities to loot from chests and you can use a certain amount of points to buy bandages from these chests. And these bandages are fantastic. They act as a shark healing 20 hit points. They act as a prayer potion. They act as a super combat potion, uh, a magic potion, and a ranging potion all in one. Um, and I believe they act as a stamina potion as well. So it's like taking a sip of every single potion imaginable along with um, a eating a shark at the same time in one tick. So those bandages are way better than any Saradoman brew or prayer potion or shark that you would be bringing in otherwise. So I definitely leave a couple inventory spaces open so that I can pick up those bandages because boy are those useful when it comes to some of the later bosses or even in the Verzik fight itself. So now let's walk through each of the strategies that we're going to use for every boss within the entry mode Theater of Blood. Before we get started, I want to send a disclaimer out there saying that I have only completed the normal mode Theater of Blood twice, and as such, some of the strategies will definitely differ between normal and entry mode. Although most of the mechanics remain the same, normal mode is significantly more punishing, so make sure you check out a different video or a different, more experienced player if you're planning on going into the normal mode. With that being said, Let's get started on the entry mode, Theater of Blood. The Maiden of Sugadinti is a very easy boss to do in the entry mode, Theater of Blood, and it shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes to complete. So before you enter into the boss's room, make sure that you are in your melee gear, you have a Dragon Warhammer or BGS out if you plan on using that in your entry mode, Theater of Blood, and make sure to drop a piece of food outside of this waiting room right here so that you have room in your inventory to switch to your blowpipe if you're using it. Run in, pray mage, and spec her twice with a dragon warhammer or any defense lowering uh, weapon if you have one. If not, simply go in with your ranging gear, pray uh, mage the whole time, have rigor up if you have it, and try to DPS the boss down. Now occasionally she'll throw out splats of blood, in which case you'll want to move two tiles away because if you continue to stand on them, uh, just like this, they will heal the boss and damage you. Crabs will spawn at 70%, 50%, and 30% HP, which you can simply DPS down with your blowpipe since they only have 16 HP. Now in the normal mode theater of blood, these crabs are extremely important to kill and freeze early with ice barrage because they will increase uh, Maiden's attack speed, max hit, and heal her for their remaining HP left. So they can quickly end the fight before it even begins. You'll notice that there are these little blood spawns. Uh, you can optionally freeze these if you brought Ice Barrage or a freezing spell to keep them from moving. However, I would recommend that your focus be to maintain DPS on the boss because she does not have much hit points. And as you can see, it is very easy to take her down without even eating a single piece of food. So with all of that in mind, simply move a couple tiles when she throws that blood at you. DPS the boss down and kill the crabs when they spawn at 70, 50, and 30% HP, and this fight should be a piece of cake. 
The Pestilent Bloat is the second boss in the entry mode Theater of Blood, and it can be a room with very simple mechanics, but very punishing if you get too greedy. So make sure you have your salve equipped and go ahead and enter the room when the bloat is on the opposite side of you. Uh, you can also equip your Crystal Halberd because we will be using its special attack when the bloat stops. So basically the goal of this room is to stay out of the bloat's line of sight. He will send buzzing flies at you which will do damage and spread to teammates if you get caught in his line of sight. I'd highly recommend using Rune Light to shift right click on him and tag him so that you can see exactly how his tiles are and see him as he crosses over um, from section to section. So. Eventually the bloat will break down, you'll use piety and your crystal halberd to special attack him, switch to your whip and defender, and just go ahead and get three whip hits off on him. So you can usually get around three or four, I tend to stick with three just to be safe because when he wakes up he'll do a massive stomp and that can hit you for upwards of 40 damage in the entry mode theater of blood. So you'll also note that he will also switch sides randomly. So don't get too close to him because he can easily turn around and spot you. The best thing to do is wait until he crosses over right now and then you cross over. So you don't cross over into the next corner until he does. And this way you're ensuring that he's always on that opposite corner from you. So meat will also fall from the ceiling, which you'll have to dodge. Simply use the shadows and avoid that falling meat. If you get hit like I did, it'll stun you and do around 20 or 25 damage, uh, but it, it shouldn't really be something that kills you in this room. Other than that, this fight is pretty straightforward. Simply avoid the bloat, avoid his stomp, stay out of his line of sight, dodge the meat, and hit him when he breaks down. So you'll notice when he gets below a certain threshold of health, he will actually start running and you can see he's moving a lot faster now. Um, so nothing really changes, you just have to be a little bit more adept um, and aware of where he is and when he makes his turns because again, he can turn around and switch directions at any point in time. After you kill Bloat, feel free to drop your salve amulet. You no longer need it for the rest of the Theater of Blood, and it frees up an inventory spot which you can use for uh, additional food or bandages. Once your battle with Bloat concludes, feel free to use the chest right outside of his room to fill up on bandages. This is an excellent time to fill up the remaining inventory spots with all of the bandages you can carry. And you may have noticed, but after you kill a boss in the Theater of Blood, all of your stats are restored to full. So uh, you can use that to your advantage towards the end of the fight to avoid consuming unnecessary supplies. Other than Verzik herself, the Nylocus room is generally the room that's probably going to give you the most amount of trouble. Don't let this th intimidate you though because it is still very do doable in a solo entry mode theater of blood. So this is really just a room with limited mechanics and is designed to test your prioritization skills to make sure that you're always on your game and doing the right thing at the right time. There's very little AFK or downtime in this room so you should always be doing something. So the Night Locust room is actually a very simple room. The main goal here is to protect the four pillars at each of the four corners of the room from various Nylos which are going to be attacking it. So you'll notice that there are different colors. You're gonna be using range on the green ones, mage on the blue ones, and melee on the gray ones. And every once in a while, you'll notice that the Nylos will, instead of attacking the pillars, they will focus their aggression on you. Biggest tip in this room is, as you can see in this clip, make sure to praise, pray the correct protection style for the attack that they're using and kill the ones that are aggroed onto you before killing the ones that are aggroed onto the pillars. This is because you can't do any DPS if you yourself are dead. So you wanna make sure that you're alive first before before you're killing the other Nylos. And here, make sure that you can uh, are prioritizing the right Nylos. So I do a, a single switch of my gear, um, then I kill all of the blue ones, then I do another switch of my gear, I kill all the melee ones, I do another switch of my gear and kill all the range ones, etc. etc. So um, that, that way I'm kind of minimizing the amount of time I'm switching gear and maximizing the amount of time that I'm actually attacking the Nylos themselves. Another tip here is if you do have a multi-target uh, ice barrage or uh, blood barrage or some type of multi-target uh, spell, you can actually use that here to your advantage in this room to kill the blue Nylos. So you can use that to kill multiple Nylos at the same time. Now one thing to note is that if you attack a Nylo with the wrong attack style, it will become invulnerable to that attack style. So another player will have to step in and kill it or its life will have to expire. They'll die after a certain amount of time uh, after being alive. So 
um, that they'll kind of clean themselves up after a while. So this room is again just testing your prioritization skills and making sure that you're, you're always active and you're killing as many as you can. Uh, you may not be able to get them all before they, they take down some of the pillars. And if that's the case and a pillar is about to go down, make sure you eat up because you do take a significant amount of unavoidable damage if the pillar goes down. Other than that, this room is pretty straightforward. You can see here I'm using Ice Barrage to barrage the Nylos and kill multiple of the blue ones at the same time. And then you can see a melee, a melee set is spawning in here, so I'm switching into my melee gear as fast as I can to kill them. And again, this is where the, the void comes in a lot of handy because we don't have a massive amount of eight-way gear switches. We simply are switching into uh, our helmet and then a, a small amount of you know necessary gear for, for range and, and mage, respectively. So the Nilo boss that comes after you finish all the waves is actually very simple and has limited mechanics. Basically, he's going to be switching his attack style every couple of ticks, and you want to make sure that you're matching your attack style and prayer to match his. When he's green, you should be praying range and attacking him with range. When he's gray, you should be praying melee and attacking him with melee. And when he is blue, you should be praying mage and attacking him with mage. The real key to this room is to just make sure that you're changing your prayer before you're changing your gear. This way you're not taking any unnecessary damage because in the normal mode theater of blood this guy can hit really really hard and kill you quickly if you do not get those prayer switches in time. Other than that it's a super quick and super simple fight to finish off the Nyla room. So Sodaseg is another easy boss in the entry mode theater of blood especially when you're doing it solo. So since this video is geared for solo players uh, doing the entry mode theater of blood, I'm going to just assume that you are doing this solo and thus I'm not going to explain the mechanics of doing this in a team. If you have a defense lowering special attack weapon, go ahead and use it on Sodaseg upon entering the fight and then switch to Prey Melee and um, Piety. In this case, you really are just going to be praying melee the whole time. He'll occasionally send out mage and range attacks. The mage attacks look like a small red ball, like the one you just saw, and the range attacks look like the small gray ball, like that one that you just saw there. After you get him down to about a third of his health, then he will send you to a mace. And all you really need to know about this maze, since you're doing it solo, is stay on those red tiles, do not click off of them, and avoid the red tornado before it catches up with you. In this case, we're just basically testing is can you make really precise clicks under pressure? And in this case, it's just so simple. Just follow the maze, don't step off of it, and get to the portal at the other end. So now you've entered phase two of the fight, nothing else has really changed. Simply switch your protection prayers to play, pray against the mage and range orbs that he throws at you, and then pray melee otherwise. If he happens to catch you off guard and hits you um, off your prayer, he will disable your prayer for a few seconds, so make sure to turn it back on. After Sodaseg reaches around 60 or 30% health, um, he will send you into another maze. This will be the uh, the final maze of the fight. And in this case, you want to just do the same thing that you've done the other two times and follow it through to completion. Stay on that red tile, avoid the tornado, and you will be perfectly safe. In the final phase of the fight, if you are using a defense lowering weapon like the Dragon Warhammer, now would be the time to launch your special attack. Every 10 attacks he will throw out this giant death ball. However, in the entry mode theater of blood, this only does 15 damage to you. So just keep your health above 15 and you really shouldn't have anything to worry about. So at this point in the fight, you should be clear to just hit him a few more times with your whip and finish him off. Now, take note that this is your last chance to use the supply chest before you go in and finish the Theater of Blood and fight with Zarpus and Versic. So make sure you come to this chest here and fill up the rest of your inventory with bandages if you have extra space. Uh, you should have a full inventory at this point. You should have dropped your salve amulet after bloat, and you should have at least four to five bandages with you. 
So Zarpus is the second to last boss in the Theater of Blood, and in this room you really shouldn't be using any supplies because you want to conserve as much as possible before Versic. So when the fight begins, you literally just have to walk around the room and stand on these little skeletons. They're called Exhumed, and they're shooting green orbs at Zarpus, attempting to heal him. Um, so literally just walk around the room, stand on these things to prevent them from healing Zarpus until Zarpus wakes up. So once Zarpus wakes up, you're going to want to be in your melee gear and have your Dragon Warhammer out or BGS if you're using any defense lowering special attacks and go ahead and special attack him twice. Once you've done this, go ahead and switch into your range gear and you actually don't need any protection prayers in this particular fight. So if you have a full inventory, feel free to drop a potion or a piece of food. Uh, don't drop the bandages because I do believe they disappear. So drop one of your potions instead and uh, just go ahead and go to town on Zarpus. So you'll notice here that he'll shoot little green balls of acid at you um, every time he looks at you. Now since you're the only person in the room and you're solo in the theater of blood, uh, this is going to be the only, he's not going to look at anyone else in the room uh, basically. So every time he looks at you and shoots a ball of acid at, at you, make sure you move at least two tiles away. And you can kind of work on painting a, a picture of sorts in this room um, as you work to fill out the, the room itself. So when Zarpus's health gets low, you want to make sure that you are observant of him because he will screech, like literally scream screech, um, and at this point in the fight, you're going to want to switch into your melee gear. He's going to constantly turn uh, from corner to corner in the room, and it's your job to make sure that you are attacking him when he is not looking in your direction. If he is looking in your direction and you attack him, you will take a massive amount of damage, and in the normal mode, Theater of Blood, you will be instantly KO'd. So, in this case, you can see he is turning towards my direction, and I am not attacking him. Uh, that, that's going to be crucial since he is looking at me. As soon as he turns away, I attack him and then click underneath my player so that my player doesn't continue to auto-attack him as he could turn in my direction and I could instantly die. Other than that, this part of the fight is very simple. Click on Zarpus. When he turns, click off of him uh, on my, my player, attack him, click off of him. If you do want to get advanced with this, yeah, Zarpus never looks in the same direction twice, so you could look in the direction that he was previously facing in order to, to continue attacking him at all times. That being said, you definitely don't have to do this for entry mode, and you can just sit there and whack at him uh, when he is not looking at you. Make sure that you drop a bandage or potion and pick up this staff from the skeleton outside. You will absolutely need it when going into the Verzik fight. Continue through the doors, and we're at the final boss. So you have finally made it to Verzik Vitor, the final boss in the Theater of Blood. So this is no joke, and even in the entry mode, Verzik can still hit reasonably hard, and I'm talking in the 20s and 30s. So um, basically there is a lot going on in this fight. And I'm not going to try to describe every single instance or part of this fight because it's going to be way too much and way too overwhelming. What I am going to try to do is tell you exactly the bare minimum that you need to know to get through the entry mode theater of blood, complete entry mode, and get your quest cape. So with that being said, let's start on the bare minimum mechanics that we need to take down Verzik Vitor. So the Verzik fight itself actually consists of three different phases. We're going to focus on one phase at a time. Using your Dawnbringer, the staff that you picked up after defeating Zarpus right outside the Verzik room, we're going to be utilizing its special attack to do massive damage to Verzik's shields. So you can start the fight by clicking on Verzik herself, 
Make sure your special attack is on and make sure you are praying magic. Attack Verzik twice with the special attack and run directly behind the northwesternmost pillar, exactly where I'm standing. As soon as Verzik spreads her legs like that, you're going to go and continue attacking her and you can be safe and just get off two or three attacks before running and hiding back behind the pillar. Once your special attack has regenerated to at least 35%, click on your orb again to launch a final special attack, finishing off Verzik. Now, make sure you stay away from the pillars because as they crumble, they will do massive damage to you. And that summarizes the first phase of the Verzik fight. In phase two of the fight, we're gonna utilize Verzik's four tick cycle to avoid getting bounced by her. You only get bounced if you're within melee distance when she attacks. So basically we're going to attack, step away, and try to avoid what happened right there. So there is actually a Verzik training utility uh, that you can use. Um, it's a website and I will link that in the description to get the exact timing for this down. It really, really helps. But ultimately the biggest tip that helped me in this section is attacking whenever I see her little cape flick. So whenever she does that little cape flicking animation, I click on her. As soon as I heat, see my hit splat or the XP drop, I click a tile away from her. You can see I've slowed down this video so you can see exactly how this is working. We can see we're avoiding all of her little poison bombs by attacking her right when she throws the bomb and then clicking away so that we don't get bounced. In the very beginning of phase two, you'll see that Verzik spawns some of these Nilocus and they're gonna home in on you. What you really have to do is called popping the crabs. And basically when they get within a certain distance away from you, they're going to explode. And the closer you are to it, the more damage is done. So you kind of want to get within their melee distance and then run away as fast as you can so they explode themselves and do minimal damage to you. So one more thing to mention are these purple crabs. These purple crabs are consistently healing Versic. And what we can do to negate that is by using our tentacle whip to poison them. So just hit them once or twice with the tentacle whip and you'll see that the crab will quickly disappear and stop healing Versic. Although we can generally out DPS these crabs in entry mode, it's a good practice to kill them when we can. So P2 Versic can be pretty difficult to get a hang of and I just wanted to summarize everything that we've just seen in the last couple of minutes into one clip annotating the entire run through. So the first thing I'm concerned about is this Nilocus running towards me. It can do a lot of damage if it pops right on top of me, so I wanna make sure that I get away from it quickly. Next, I wanna get into that four tick cycle, and unfortunately right here I make a mistake and get bounced. It's not a problem, let's eat a piece of our food, recover some health, and get back into the rhythm. Now I'm noticing that we need to take care of that purple crab because it's healing Versic for a lot of HP, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it, avoid that poison bomb, and get into the four tick cycle. So remember, we're trying to click whenever she does that cape flicking emote and click away from her right as we see the XP drop or, uh, or hit splat. In this case, you can see it's a very easy rhythm to get into once you get the hang of it. And again, that Verzik training um, utility, which I will link in the description, is awesome for practicing this along with entry mode top itself. So Versic has spawned another set of Nilocus and another purple crab. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, trying to avoid this green Nilo here by popping it and letting it get close to us, then running away, and then instantly hitting that purple crab. Here, we're tanking a few of the poison um, hit bombs, but it's not a big deal. We can, can and probably should be eating some of our bandages so we don't get stacked out. In the last phase of the P2 fight, Versic is gonna start healing herself when she spawns these red crabs. Go ahead and kill them as quickly as they can as they only have 20 HP and should only take a couple whip hits to take down. While these crabs are active, they can heal Verzik for her for their remaining HP. At this point, we're going to be doing the same thing that we've been doing before by just attacking Verzik and stopping when she spawns those red crabs. Because as soon as she spawns those red crabs, then she's invulnerable for damage for a little while and the damage you do to her will actually heal her. Make sure you're also praying magic in this phase instead of ranged as she's primarily using those red magic based attacks instead of her uh, green orbs like you're seeing here. We're staying in that four tick cycle uh, while avoiding getting bounced by Verzik and that's all we have to do to finish P2 of the fight. 
So phase three Verzik is where things start to get a little hectic. Verzik will turn into a giant spider and start chasing you around the room while attacking you with mage and range, as well as melee on occasion. Um, she also throws out four special attacks, which you have to contend with, and we'll go through each of those right now. The first special attack that Versic is going to throw at you is going to be her webs. She'll walk into the center of the room and start shooting webs from her thorax as you have to dance around her and avoid them. If you do happen to get caught in these webs, well, you will probably take somewhere between 20 and 30 damage unless you have a teammate around who can free you. Uh, however, since this guide is geared towards solo entry mode theater of blood play, then it's likely that you're not going to have someone to free you. So. Don't worry about doing too much DPS during this stage and simply focus on running around Verzik and avoiding those webs. The second special attack that Verzik will use on you is called the Yellow Ball. She'll actually end up opening up her thorax and a yellow spot will appear for each player in the instance. It's your job to coordinate with your teammates and find that yellow square and stand on it. As long as you're standing on it, you'll take no damage from the ball. And if you're not, you can get hit for up to 74 in normal mode theater of blood. As far as entry mode goes, I don't think you'll be punished too hard for it. However, it's a super easy special attack to avoid. So there's no reason why you shouldn't just be standing on that yellow tile. The third special attack that Verzik will use on you is going to be the green ball. Now in the normal mode theater of blood you're supposed to bounce this ball around to each of your teammates however in the entry mode you can just tank it you'll take a 20 and then move on not much to it the final special attack isn't really a special attack at all at 20 percent health verzik will spawn a tornado for each player in the instance your job is to avoid this tornado because if it catches up with you it does a lot of damage to you and heals her so you want to finish this stage of the fight quickly. Now's the time to pull out your Dragon Claws, Crystal Halberd, or other special attack weapon to hit Versic as hard as you can to finish off the fight. Now that you've finally wrapped up the last of Versic in phase three, Go ahead and head into that treasure room and claim your well-deserved loot. You have successfully completed an entry mode theater of blood run. So I found that the loot ranges from anywhere between 65 and 150k. And uh, although there's no chance of uniques, at least they give you something, right? So thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you all learned something or at least could use it to get through your theater of blood run, or at least it's been informative in some way. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow and reach new pe people. So thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of your day. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down Hitting your place